and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we are gonna talk to the uh, creative brains behind Rainbow Puppets, my friend David Messick. Welcome, Dave. Hi, good to see you. It's good to see you too. How long have you been doing Rainbow Puppets? Because I've known a few of your other iterations in your life. Sure, we started doing shows in Hampton over 40 years ago. The very first performance we ever did was at the Hampton Main Library. It was a production of Jack and the Beanstalk. I was in high school at the time. Oh good, because I was going to say, you don't look that old, Dave. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> and uh, so the librarian was kind enough to allow us to produce a performance. It was a marionette show, so we used string puppets then, which we don't use as much anymore. And it was the hottest day in the history of Hampton, and we'd use plastic strings on the puppets. And as the performance was going on, the humidity got to the knots. Oh. And all the puppet strings started unknotting, oh, and we're no. panicking and retying the puppets as we're getting ready to take them on stage. In high school, so how did you learn to do it, and what attracted you to puppets? I guess I always uh, loved seeing them on television. So I was one of those children of television. You're the Muppet Generation. Yes, I really was the Muppet Generation, and uh, WVEC, which was downtown Hampton at the time, I would get up before the broadcast day would begin and look at the snow and just wait <laughs> until the puppets would come on and the cartoons. It is unusual, I think, for for. A business. I mean, it's a nonprofit, but but to stick around that long, like that's like forty years is a couple generation of kids, sure, and and a lot of adults who've come along as well. How do you keep it fresh? How do you stay connected to to, to what's going on? I, there's just so much history in the area. This particular show is filled with history. So there's always a great history story to tell. And there's so many amazing animals to tell stories about. So it's really easy. Well, you've done a lot that keeps it educational. And sometimes, no offense, when, um, when grown-ups try to be educational to kids, they talk down to kids or they make it boring. You don't. How, how do you do that? I, I teach a seminar on that, and it's called Entertain First. What's really important is to sit with a historian and say, if I can only tell you one thing about Mary Peake, what do I tell? Not five million things. Right. I'm going to tell you the one really interesting thing and get you so excited that you'll then go to the library and pick up a book and learn more. So it's uh, it, you don't want to create death by data. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. what, you, what you want is... Manatees are an interesting creature, and did you know that pirates thought that they were really living mermaids? Great story. For another one about pirates, why did they wear the eye patch? It's not because they're missing an eye. It's so that they could have night vision and have vision when they would go down underneath the ship, and it's dark down there they could see in the dark. Hey, see? That's cool stuff. It is. Yeah. So... You, a lot of what you've done has been through the schools, through young audiences, you, getting um, that, those elementary school bookings. How, but you've changed though, like this is your full-time job now. And for a long time, you know, you and I worked together. Yeah, well, what has happened is businesses all over the country are starting to realize how important literacy is to the communities in which they live. And we have been fortunate that Optima Health came to us and said literacy is a top priority for us. We're trying to find a way to get in front of as many children as possible and teach them that reading is important. And I said, well, I know how to get in front of lots and lots of children. But what we've done, instead of going to parents and saying, parents, we want you to read to your children, we go to the school and present a program called Open a Book which is filled with stories of famous people who have used literacy to get ahead. People like the Wright brothers, people like Mary Peek, people like Abraham Lincoln. So we do the show, and at the end of the show, we say, well, it's not enough just to talk about opening a book. We want each and every one of you to have a book that you can take home and read to your family. So we flipped it. It's not parents read to your children. It's children go home and read to your parents. So we're bringing books into households, some households which may not have the practice of reading each and every day. So, Well, and how well does this dovetail 
as we know, your people out there don't know, but your wife used to do the scheduling and the volunteer and really helped set up the Mayor's Book Club for years and years and years. It's really all coming together, oh, it isn't really it? really is. And Marcy's <laughs> experience with the Mayor's Book Club has been very helpful to us in going across the state and efficiently getting the books distributed. It's it's not as easy as you might think. You would be <laughs> no, <so> writing <laughs> and publishing a book is actually easier than it used to be, but yes. getting distribution and getting big it, print is, and, is much harder. And some schools uh, don't necessarily know how many students are at school that day. So we'll bring 100 books and then because they say there are 100 students here and we you, find they, out they have an average daily count. That's right. Yes, I know. I will tell you, and I'm not saying it just because we're on uh, at the Hampton Channel, going around the state has made me really appreciate the early childhood programs in Hampton. Hampton is fabulous. There are wonderful programs at Moton and the downtown Hampton uh, development. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Hampton can really be proud of what they're doing for young ch children. I think so too, and I and I certainly agree. And, and thanks to Optima for coming on board because literacy is the key to everything. It's if you don't get that foundation, you can't go anywhere. That's right. You can't learn, you know, science if you can't read well enough. You can't, in, right. you know, grow as a person and develop. It's it's limiting. And that's two of the things that come up in the show. First of all, the Wright brothers should not have been the first to develop a plane. They were not uh, heavily funded and they were not major scientists, but they read the work of every other scientist and said, well, here are the three holes that other scientists haven't figured out. Power, how to power the plane, how to lift it off the ground, and how to control it when you get in the air. So they just focused on those three things and ended up flying. And literacy was so important to Mary Peek that she risked jail. It mm -hmm. was against the law for African Americans to read yeah. in the South. And she risked jail to teach children how to read under an oak tree in property that is now Hampton University. It just gives you chills when you think about it. It does. And then that went on, you know, once the Civil War started and the contraband began to settle here, she continued to teach until she became ill and died. But, and, and it's such an important symbol. I mean, what she did and what it meant and how it continues today in education. So we're talking a lot here. Um, I also want to say, though, you bring an amazing amount of energy and creativity, and, and, and a lot of that is the music. You, you keep it very bouncy and alive. Who writes your music? I do. I know. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you for tossing. Say it. Was, <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Music runs in your family. It does. It, my, my mother was a music teacher and ironically taught some of the children that are now adults and are doing voices in our show. So it's really exciting to see that. It is, you know, it is such a community and you are so community based. And I, I think that's really important that you're in Hampton. I mean, obviously you're regional now. Now, but you're in Hampton. You've been here for 40 years. And is there anything else you want to say? I want to I want to quit talking um, by and large, say so we can see the show. But. Right. Well, the one thing I do want to mention is you're going to see Mary Peak in the little sequence that we'll be presenting, and she's one of the Hampton heroes that has recently been honored. The voice of Mary Peak is another Hampton hero, Jerry Hollins, who has passed away, but she was instrumental in getting the story of the contraband slaves told here in America. She was an opera singer, and that we ended up using her as the voice of Mary Peak is another strange thing that just gives you chills. Isn't it wonderful how yeah. those things come together? Yes. And, and um, there's other Hampton figures in the thing that were General Butler was also, that's part yes. of the contraband You'll story, his, yes. his legal decision. Uh, <laughs> that really changed changed the course of the Civil War, that the motive and the emotion, um, at least to some degree. And, and, and got Hampton burnt to the ground. <laughs> yes, well, there's that too, right, yeah. right. Changed all of our history. Yes. Um, so this is a segment of which of your shows? Because you have so many now. Well, it's it's a segment <laughs> that appears, parts, portions of it appear in Open a Book, okay. but portions of it also appear in our Footsteps in History, which is traveling around uh, the area thanks to a grant from York County. So we have just been blessed by both Hampton and Optima and York County to be able to tell these stories. Fabulous. And, you know, we're going to rerun this when you're doing shows in Hampton. I know you're going to be in the elementary schools. That's not something that people can just pop in and see, but it'll be great for our school children. But you do other public performances, and we want people to go. Sure. And I will, before we close, tell my story. Um, my children used to go to your puppet shows uh, many, many moons ago and fell asleep to the tapes and <laughs> could sing 
um, several of the shows pretty much all the way through. Wow. <laughs> it, you know, they, they've kept that, and, uh, and it's wonderful that some of their friends are now helping you with the puppets, and it just really is this community and circle that, that keeps going. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to pause now, and when, uh, when, when the set comes back, it will be the puppets. Thanks for watching. Benjamin Bella, what are you doing? Those are my slaves. You have no right to keep them. Send them back. Not so fast. Not so fast. Maybe I don't have to give them back. This is Union territory. Yes, but there are rules, even in war. Even a second-rate political appointee should know that. It's true. I may not be the greatest soldier in the Union Army, but I'm a darn good lawyer. Let's just check the rule book. Mr. Carey, it seems you're right. I can't take your private property, and you consider these slaves your property, right? Yeah, they're mine. I got them from Colonel Mallory. Hold on now. You could make these slaves do practically anything you tell them to, right? Matter of fact, they were digging trenches for my troops until they ran away. Aha! It looks like I found a little loophole in the rule book. Seems I can confiscate any of your property that you can use against me in the war. See? This is what the rule book calls contraband of war. It's right here. Contra, huh? Contraband of war. In fact, these are contraband slaves. And let me be absolutely clear, if any slave makes it here to Fort Monroe, they become contraband and they will not be returned to the South. Benjamin Butler, I will be back. You have not heard the last of me. Maybe I wasn't loud enough to be heard. If any, any slave, slave makes, makes it to it Fort Monroe, Monroe, they're free! So make, so make your way your here to Hampton, Hampton, Virginia! Can you believe that? He took my slaves and kept them. And what's worse, once the rest of my slaves found out, they ran off too. And it's not just my slaves. It's slaves all over Virginia. Word's spreading all over the South. They don't even call this place Fort Monroe anymore. Now they're calling it Fort Freedom. I heard a rumor they're going to turn this whole town over to the slaves. The whole town? No, they won't. I'll burn it to the ground first. And the Confederates did burn Hampton to the ground. One of the people burned out of their homes was Mary Peak. Even without a home and without a proper schoolhouse, she knew the importance of education, especially to African Americans who would soon be free. And so on a big oak tree in Hampton, she started a school. Let's all follow Mary Peak. Join me underneath the tree. If you really want to learn to read, won't you come and learn with me? Just sit down beneath the tree. Come along and you will see. We will have fun. Wait and see. Just how easy it can be when you read. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, N, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Come along and you will see just how can be when you read when you can read a whole world opens up for you so read read of the places where your ancestors were born Most of all, read, learn all you can, make the most of today so that your future will take you as far as your mind and imagination can dream. Dream of a day when all 
all people in America, regardless of their race, are free, free to learn. <clears throat> now, therefore I, Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States, by virtue of the power in me vested as Commander-in-Chief, do order and declare that all persons held as slaves are, and henceforward, shall be free. The first time those words were read in the South was under the very tree where Mary Peake started her school. How fitting that after the war ended, a great place of learning grew from that very spot. I'm Ezra Hill. I was born here on the peninsula and later became a member of the Tuskegee Airmen. Many of my fellow airmen first studied here in Hampton. What Mary Peake believed back then is true today. A good education is the key to a successful future. 